Today we're gonna be installing a generator kit into my house. So here I have my adapter box. This is gonna allow me to plug into my generator. It's real nice, weather tight. It's got a good connection here for a 50 amp cord that we're gonna be wiring in. We have some six gauge wire. We have a whole new panel face here that we had made um, because they didn't make an interlock for my panel. So you can get these made. I'll put all the information you need to know about this in case you have the same panel I do down in the description. So make sure you go check that out. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. This is gonna be a really nice mechanical interlock. So we're gonna go ahead and move some breakers around. We need to condense some of our breakers to a split breaker. And then this 50 amp breaker is gonna be for our back fed power. And we even have some stickers made. Here, come over here, get a, get a little zoom into this. On how to operate the generator once this is installed. I even had stickers made letting everybody know there's three port sources of power. That way, if I'm ever not the one doing this, nobody can mess it up. It's very detailed instructions, so that's a really cool feature. Also, let's let's come let's come in here and take a look at this. All this janky work here that you see, this was like this when I bought this house. So we're gonna be getting this cleaned up later. We're gonna be adding a rain gutter and a Myers hub and getting this all cleaned up. So for now, let's go ahead and just get this generator adapter box uh, installed, and we'll go from there. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and kill power to the house. We're gonna go ahead and take this panel face off. We're gonna rearrange some breakers and this should be a quick, easy job. When I went and bought this breaker set up here, I got a split 20 breaker because I thought I was gonna need to condense some of these breakers in this panel. Turns out whoever put this panel in just has this open breaker here that's not hooked up to anything. So. We don't need to do that. We're just gonna slide everything down because our back fed breaker to work with the interlock device needs to go at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and move everything down one row. Okay, now that we've rearranged our breakers, we made some space in our panel. We're gonna go ahead and just test fit our back fed generator breaker. It's gonna go at the very top right here. We're gonna go ahead and get this in and we're gonna test our cover and make sure our mechanical interlock device is working before we go any further. All right, let's go ahead and give our interlock a quick test here and make sure everything is gonna work as it's supposed to. Looks like everything is fitting perfect. Can't move this breaker if that's on and vice versa. So we're gonna go ahead and get our box where we want it. We're gonna get it nice and level, make a couple marks and get this thing mounted. All right, we're using a masonry drill bit. We're gonna pre-drill these holes, put these anchors in. I know I don't have any electrical here, but if you're unsure, it's a good idea to find out. Okay, so we're gonna use these connectors here. They're gonna go into the box. Make sure you have the, you're buying the correct EMT connectors that are watertight. They have a seal on the inside and they have a seal here. So that way you get a watertight seal. It's gonna go right on in and you're gonna thread it down. And that's gonna give us our watertight seal. Our EMT is gonna come into this. We'll have our collar that'll go on the pipe. Then this will be a nice watertight compression fitting right here. So we're gonna come around this corner with a 90, just like this, have a piece of EMT in here. And then we're gonna go straight into our box we're gonna run this out just a little long. That way we don't mess up the seal on the edge of the house right there. You're gonna put your collar over your piece of EMT. You're gonna slide the EMT in here. Once you have the EMT slid in, you have your collar on, get the nut on, tighten it down. Okay, so coming to this one, we're gonna put our collar on first. We're gonna put our compression seal on next. We're gonna slide this in. That's gonna give us the correct spacing we need off the wall. And we're gonna determine exactly where we need to drill the hole in the side of the box. Okay, so now that we have our spot marked, you wanna make sure that if you're going through the side of your panel like I am, that all the wires are moved inside. So I've already confirmed that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pilot hole drilled. All right, now that we have our pilot hole drilled, we're gonna go ahead and use a step bit and get this to three quarter. All right, so we got our EMT cut.
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fish our wires through. Nice, easy run here since it's just going straight in. All right, we're gonna run these remaining wires back to our generator box here. All right, let's go ahead and put our cover back on. We're gonna go ahead and plug our ground wire in here. Okay, so now that we have the casing stripped on our wires, we're gonna go ahead and wire in our box here. And it says on this box, if you're not familiar, Y is black, W is white, and X is red, but it also has it labeled on the box. So that way you know exactly where to put the wires. So let's go ahead and get these things hooked up. So when you're stripping these wires, you wanna make sure that you strip off enough to where there's no case inside, but also there's no copper wire sticking out above this plastic piece here. There we have it. All of our wires are connected nice. Last thing to do is go ahead and hook the ground wire up and that's gonna go to the other side of the bus bar here. All right, and we're ready to put this cover on. Cool, so here we go, all installed. I mounted up on the wall. Like I said, I really like this cover because it has this nice heavy duty snap. It has this nice gasket in here and it's for a 50 amp cable. So I have it up so high off the ground just because sometimes if we get a really heavy rain, there's a lot of flooding here. So in the event that that happens, I wanted this thing nice and high. It's nice and tucked up under my eaves here. So no water is gonna be touching this anyways, but this is a watertight box. All of these seals are all watertight. Um, so we're cruising right along. All we got to do is hook these wires up to the panel and we're ready to test this sucker out. Okay, so my wife's inside with no power, so we're going to try to do this fast. So we have our ground wire and our neutral wire. Those are both going to go to this bus bar right here in the back. If you have a separate bus bar for neutrals and separate for ground, obviously white's your neutral, green's your ground, hook them up to the correct bar. Mine's all on one bar. My power wires, red and black, are going to go up to my back fed breaker. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this ran right now, working with some pretty big wires, so we're gonna have to wrestle these in here. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. Now we're just gonna go ahead and take care of some, some wire management organization. We're gonna get this organized and cleaned up a little bit, get the wire stuff back in, and then we're gonna get this faceplate on and we're gonna test out our interlock and we're just about done. The only work we've done in this panel is just add this one breaker. So everything else in here you see has been done by other people and it definitely needs to be cleaned up a little bit, especially this stuff down here. But for now, let's go ahead and get this on. Okay, cool. So now that we're all done, we got the face of the panel back on. Now our interlock works like this. This breaker, I can't turn on unless I slide this up. And in order to slide this up, the main breaker needs to be off. If I have the main breaker on, I can't slide this up, which means I can never backfeed power into the panel with the main breaker on. So I gotta shut it off, slide this up, and then I can turn on my generator power in this backfed breaker. I have a sticker that says it's a mechanically interlo interlocked breaker, and I can't turn the main breaker back on with this one on. Okay, so now that we're done, we're gonna put our stickers on the outside here. That lets everybody know that we have the three sources of power and we're also gonna mount our stickers that we had made for the instructions. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this off. That's gonna let my mechanical interlock slide down. I'm gonna turn my main breaker back on and now I can go ahead and turn all my house breakers back on. All right guys, so now that we're all wrapped up, we got our stickers right here on the front of the panel. Let's go ahead and get a close up of this here. This is our operating instructions for generator power. We have a sticker on the outside that says there's three sources of power, utility grid generator and PV solar electric system. Let's pop this thing open. So in here, we got all the breakers labeled. Everything's labeled nice and neat. We have our warning on our bottom solar breaker here, which is required. We have an additional sticker up here that says our three sources of power. So let's go ahead and show you how we're gonna hook this thing up. First, we're just gonna go ahead and turn off all the breakers including solar if you have it. Okay, so in order to use our mechanical interlock here, you can see it's working as it should. I can't turn this breaker on unless my main breaker is off, which is what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my main breaker off. That allows me to slide the mechanical interlock up and then I can go ahead and turn my generator power on and there we go. So we're gonna leave all of our house breakers off and we're gonna go ahead and grab our cord and show you how to hook it up here. So we have a 50 amp cord, nice heavy duty cord. We're gonna go ahead, pop open our plug that we installed for our generator. We're gonna get this on, gonna slide right in. When it slides in, you're gonna give it a little twist and then it has this lock on the end that threads on. 
Okay, now we can take our cord along with our adapter to hook up our 50 amp cord to our generator. It's gonna allow us to plug in the 50 amp and then plug in to the 240 section on our Win 6800 generator. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in first. And there we go, flipped over to 240 power. I already have my bonded neutral disconnected to make this a floating neutral. At this point, I would be ready to go ahead and fire this generator up. And once it's fired up, I would begin to slowly turn my breakers on one by one powering the circuits that I want for my generator backup power. Now, if your generator has a bonded neutral like mine does, it's really important that you disconnect it so it's a floating neutral. If you guys have questions about that, let me know. And also, next week's video is gonna be me using this exact generator to power my whole house. So make sure you stay tuned for that one so you can see how this setup works.